Scott Gorman, welcome to the American Glutton Podcast. Thank you, E. Gosh, it's so good to see you. I can't begin to tell you. Good to see I, you, my, too. My dude. head's blowing up. Um, okay, for the purposes of the audience, let's um, let's give them just a backstory on how we know each other. And obviously, I've given you permission. You can say whatever you want about me, which normally we don't talk about this stuff. Like, Correct. I, yeah. So what was it, 20 plus years ago? Yeah, it was late 90s or maybe yeah. or When did you start filming, filming John Q? I think it was the year 2000, so 22 like years ago. Exactly. So a friend of E's uh, that I knew contacted me and said, my dear friend is going to work on a show, needs some help. He's struggling a little bit. And can you help him? And what I had done prior to that was I helped actors, athletes, and musicians kind of get right that suffered from substance use and alcohol use disorder. And I would go on set and be with them for 24 seven. And that's how I came to be in Ethan's life. And boy, did we have fun. And I'm gonna let you dig into some other stories, but just a blessing. And I have such fond memories of us being in Canada yeah and being on that set and uh i was uh, i was um my my friends had an intervention and they basically were like look dude this is you are <laughs> on the path to death very rapidly approaching it we are pleading with you yeah. to do something and i said okay 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 i'll do something and then you know, I didn't, I didn't do anything. I, I probably did more drugs and, and they, and then they surprised me again with another one. And at this one, I was leaving very soon to go do this movie. And, uh, and they said, we want, we want to help. We know this guy, he'll, he'll help you through this. And so like the first, I think the first week in Canada, I was very, very sick. Yes you know massive amounts of as i call it polypharma going yeah. in that body of yours yeah so there so you helped very much with that because you know I, I i don't know that i was you know having gone through this a number of times you start to rationalize everything and you're like no no the junkies don't die it's the it's the boozers who die when they quit booze right or or the guys who are taking 500 xanax a day those guys die but Heroin doesn't kill you when you quit. It's just miserable. So, but that said, in a strange town, um, uh, on a, on a on, first, you know, every job, you're it's like the first day at school. You don't know anyone, and here I am, kicking heroin and very very sick, and like you you got me through it, which was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, um, it just brings tears to my eyes. So many of those experiences, and I'm so glad. One of my dear actor friends, I my mantra to him was, "Stay vertical, dude. Yeah, stay vertical. Because if we're vertical, we got a chance, right? Right. And you have done that, and I'm just like, thank you, whatever's out there. Yeah, but I mean, I I do feel um, like a a bit of a miracle in that sense. Well, you know, to, to that word, here's. Miracle, it gets bandied about in recovery all the time. Oh, he's a miracle. He's a miracle. This is what it means to me. Um, the best definition, a miracle is defined as something that can't happen. Right. And Ethan Suplee and Scott Gorman not putting substances in their body over an extended period of time is an impossibility. Right. And yet we're... This is real. What this is flesh and bone right now talking, and we're not we're not horizontal and under a six feet of dirt. And um, anyway, so in that in that context, yes, it's a miracle. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I, th I think recently I've been there's a little bit more sciency stuff to kind of explain all of this, but you know. 
I think it's very easy for somebody who hasn't gone through it. And, and, and then, and then we're going to get into this too, but the, the parallels with obesity and, Mm. and uh, food addiction or whatever you want to call it. Right. Cause scientists are like, you can't actually be physically addicted to food. And I'm like, okay, well, my behavior is very much going to be contradictory to that statement. Yeah. And Um, people are dying in that vortex of is it a disease is it that people are dying yeah it doesn't matter well the language doesn't matter whatever it is yeah Yeah. um but the idea of choice so like you know i go yes every time i did drugs i had to make the choice to do drugs but i don't think that's a you know i think it's a a bit of an easy um an easy thing to say when I'm still having to make the decision basically every day to be a sober person. Mm -hmm. And so the idea that it's just as simple as a choice, I think there's a lot more to it than that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, um, and the, the same has been said about obesity where it's like, well, you're, you're this is a voluntary action Mm -hmm. you're 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 fat because you're volunteering to be fat you're overeating and you know you know i think the idea is that as long as a person knows what's causing this then they are utterly uh personally responsible for it now i do believe in personal responsibility i'm not trying to take personal responsibility out of it because i think that's the whole game but I do think it's much more complicated than just going, I'm choosing to do this or I'm not choosing to do this. It, it, here's my explanation. God forbid you or I were diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. And it would be like this. Hey, e, bow up, son. Get rid of that Hodgkin's. It's a matter of will. You can right. just get rid of it. Will it away. Will it away today and suck it up because it's just a matter of choice. And that kills people. That stigma around substances, alcohol, gambling, porn, blah, 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 whatever it is these days, right? is is no different in my mind in terms of the disease concept. It's just, that's, that's 39 years active in this recovery world. And so, Anyway, that's, I, I get, I get jacked about, about that. And, yeah. And I always use that with families that I work with around, well, you know, Ethan is great, but he just has to just stop. Right. Well, how do you, how do you do that? That's a multi-layered proposition. Right. And it's probably not exactly the same for everyone. Individually. Correct. Right. Yep. And so, you know, when you, when I think about the parallels, because I think there are so many parallels to weight loss, which has been my other biggest battle of my life. The first, the first thing I had to confront because it was killing me much quicker were drugs and alcohol. Yes. I was going to die I call it fast. the slow drip. Right. For, for me, insulating with massive amounts of pounds and carrying it around is more of a slow drip to my internal organs, slow drip of death, than slamming 151 and doing an eight ball. That gets the, the organs moving in a hurry. Right? Yeah. And so that's why I look at that in um, my career. I got sober when I was 20 years old and I had only drank and drugged for almost seven years. But those were dog years. Right. Because to your point, you, I know you personally, I remember it to this day, when you know more than the PDR, than the physician's desk reference, because yeah. you were naming drugs, saying, I know if I take this amount, and then if I take this amount, then I'm going to be here. That's the only reason kids are dying today. You're not, you have to be a great chemist today, right. an amazing chemist to take enough Vyvanse and Adderall to counteract the hydros. In the, in, in the brown tar that you're snorting, right? Yeah. That's, that's why people, and then God forbid, you get a little hot shot with some fentanyl. So 
man, fentanyl scares the shit out of me. Um, you know, and, and, and this is just an aside, but I've always been like, you know, not that I would ever want my kids to do drugs like that, but I want to be very, I don't want to, um, force, uh, you know, more, more than anything, I don't want to get them into a situation where they don't feel like they can talk to me about anything. Yes. That's my strongest desire is I want you to be able to communicate with me about anything. And then this fucking fentanyl comes on the scene and it's like, there's no way. Cause I was an expert chemist with I know you were. pharmacology. Yeah. You can't, you can't do that with fentanyl. And, and we even had fentanyl back then we would have to get it out of a patch Yes. On a I remember. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there wasn't, so you knew exactly how much you were going to get. You knew not to mix it with stuff, but now if you just got stuff you're buying on the street, that's loaded with it. Yeah. Th that's, that's a really terrifying prospect without question. Um, but in, in this, in this universe where um, there, there, it, it seems like, successful people are just making a choice and then remaking a choice and remaking a choice to get on the right path. Mm -hmm. How, how do we, how do we give that to, to, to another person? How do you, you know what I mean? And, and again, I do, I do agree. It's all individual, but at the end of the day, like if somebody wants to succeed what, what, what are your ideas on giving them the tools that can help them succeed? First and foremost, I, I'm, tr I try to convey of being able to catch the buzz of recovery. Remember whenever, what were those bars that we would go to and sit around those big, like at Laurel and, uh, Laurel and Crescent Heights and Sunset. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm sure it's changed names. You too. remember that. Yeah. But you know, that was like a buzz and your boys would be hanging out all there and there'd be a buzz around just being there. Yeah. I want to create that same kind of buzz around recovery because this is my buzz today. Me being able to access some tear ducts and have, as my guys in the NFL say, Gorman real talk. I want real talk coming from my belly and being able to express my love to you and our connection as human beings. That's, that's a real 50,000 foot view yeah. of, of, of what it is. The, the buzz of walking through a feeling. You mentioned it already. And I deal with it with the NFL guys all the time. When you go to a new city and you got released or cut, which means in the real world, you got fired. Right. You have to go to a new school. And it's the feelings are no different than just what you said on that John Q movie. movie. You're in sixth grade and you're going to a new school. So how do I navigate those feelings without having to snort a hydro or do whatever to, to quiet those down. And so I don't know, but I'm, I'm like, I'm just like, I, I want to hold guys hands and just say, let's, let's try this for a day and see what you think. And yeah. Uh, and just walk them through the feelings, the feelings and the, just the way life is experienced. I think that that is such a big part of what substances were to me like i i was so dissatisfied with the way life felt mm. and then the problem became when you come off of them and and by the way this parallels perfectly to food too it all fucking parallels to be honest with you for me and i'm sure for other people and so this conversation me too. yeah yeah and so I, I really think of this conversation as a, a macro of all of it, right? If you're, if you're compulsively behaving around something that's ultimately harmful to you in your own determination. And whatever, whatever I'm using to change the way that I feel. Yeah. Right? That's right. fair. Totally. But whatever it is. Yeah. Right? Yeah, if you can't, if you can't sit comfortably with your wife, you got to go run 20 miles. 
to get good with being around the people in your life, even that could become unhealthy, I think. 100%. Um, but once, once through it, right, you make this decision. I can't, my life has become unmanageable, whatever it is, whatever your moment where you go, like, I need to change. You start down the path. The thing that always fucked me up and it fucked me up on diets too. Yeah. Was that now in this new existence, I'm even more miserable than I recall being at when I was as bad off as I was. Do you know what I mean? Like, Suddenly life is more miserable a couple weeks in. I haven't learned how to process how I feel about anything. I, I'm just experiencing pain all the time and discomfort. And it's like, this is where I failed so many times, Scott. Like, yeah. how, how do I get through that? If I'm abstinent, this is all supposed to go away. Right. That's, that's the narrative going in the, the squirrel cage. And it's not, it's, it's like, so then what has to happen? I have to do something that is, goes against all of my DNA, which would be back in the day, I had to carry quarters in the early eighties when I got into recovery to use on a payphone. And what I would do in that two week, that three week period where my default, which would be I'm thirsty. I'm going to change the way that I feel. Right. I want to, I want to rip on this bong. I want to do whatever it is. I had to put the quarter in and say, Hey, I'm thirsty yeah. because I'm scared to go to this class. I'm scared to talk, to tell my girlfriend I'm breaking up with her. I'm scared that I'm not going to pay, be able to pay rent today. I'm, I am angry at my mom. I am so pissed at my dad. I want to, how do you navigate those feelings early in recovery? And even 39 years in, right. it's the same. So I'm calling our dear friend, Danny Nooch. I'm on the blower with him. Say, Nooch, I'm, my hair's on fire. Yeah. And then he says the brilliant thing of like, his mentor would say to him, hey, Danny, it's just Tuesday. Let's just do Tuesday. Right. right. So, <laughs> so yeah. brilliant. It pulls Simple. it all back into perspective, right? Right. Anyway, so that's that's where if people can hold on through just Tuesday by doing those kinds of things. And again, that's not my default is not to open my mouth, emit air with words and feelings attached. I don't have that experience. I don't know about you. I didn't grow up in that family. Yeah. Where, you know, I'm, I'm, there was a great, there was a guy named Jimmy R who was a teamster truck driver on the, on the sets. And he'd say, he'd say you know, when I'm at the, uh, on the roach coach at 6 a.m. on the Warner lot, I'm not going around to my buds, you know, drinking coffee and eating uh, breakfast burritos saying, hey guys, I'm feeling a little vulnerable this morning. <laughs> that, that ain't happening yeah. you know but with my brothers in recovery i can do that and that's where in my opinion where the healing takes place and i can get through a day because again this is an important fact is, as you know nobody's going to tell ethan supli or scott gorman what to do nobody right but you explained it to me this way hey kid you can do whatever you want whatever as long as you're willing to pay the price. Yeah. The price gets pricey as we get closer and closer. And I don't, I don't like to use that term bottom. I use kind of beaten into a state of reasonableness. I like that. <laughs> I like you know? that too. Because for me, substance, alcohol, and food, they're the undefeated, super heavyweight champion of the free world. Undefeated. And in, in my mind, where that you mentioned the word already, that ancient enemy rationalization, I'm thinking, you know what? I think I can take him today. Right. I'm going to go. And then he rips my arm off. And then he bites my shoulder in half. And then, and then I'm, I'm like, you know, and it's like, here we go again. And then finally, 
that surrender process was able to happen of accepting the fact that for whatever reason, ethyl alcohol, arguably the worst, most devastating drug on the planet and other compounds, along with, for me, certain foods, um, they affect me different than my fellows. Yeah. And accepting that took a while. It yeah. took a while. I, 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 the most heartbreaking thing, and I've had friends who have, you know, gone out of recovery who have gone like, I'm okay now. Yeah. And I've had a few instances where I'm like, you know, I'm not worried about you. That, that's mm -hmm. happened. But to the friends who I'm like, no, bro, I, you know, and I don't, I don't say this, this is all internal, but I go like, dude, I, you you need this mm. so much and then a year later they're just fixed quote unquote right they're cured or whatever it is yeah. and then they start back down on that path it's heartbreaking it's it's and i imagine um from you know i try to take my parents perspective mm. and, and go like how many times did they sit down with me and go we know what you're doing uh, we're worried about you and I'm going, you know, put on my best PR cap and I'm going like, no, I'm perfectly fine. I have everything. Yeah. You can string some sentences together very eloquently. Yeah. yeah. And I'm telling them I'm fine. And, um, you know, I think with, uh, food, this is another thing. I, 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 I don't, I don't go around judging people's weight. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I, but I do know, um, some people have come to me and gone, I'm at my wits end. Can, can you help me? And I'll go like, yeah, sure. I'll fuck anything you need. You want to check in with me every day and we'll make a plan and we'll talk and all of this. And then, you know, a few weeks go by and I don't hear from them and it's a little bit heartbreaking. Yeah. You know, how, how do you, how do you Johnny, deal with that? Johnny Appleseed. Right. It's part of the process. Yeah. It's part of because I've had guys who've said to me, Ethan, remember, you know, in 2000 when you said this to me, it it's stuck in there somewhere, but it wasn't ready to be applied that day. Yeah. But then being able to turn back and look at all of the times for me when I got in trouble and look at this snowball, there was one or two things always present. So being able to look at that and that's how do, how do I can, how can I really show my love with my guys, my bros, my, my friends, my family is tell them the truth as I see it from a place of just massive love. Yeah. And then, then leave it alone. And because I don't, I know you don't like to get bull rushed. I don't mm. like to get bull rushed and it's just a matter of, of, of planting those seeds. I've done a, a eulogy at the DGA on Sunset with an amazing actor who I just saw on Holes. And he's, he's, uh, he's dead, you know? And yeah. you've been to those. Yeah. You've had some gifted people in your life that are not on the planet anymore. And it breaks my heart. You know, that I, there was a guy named Scott R in, in Studio City. He was an amazing, eloquent speaker in recovery and he'd say, I judge no man, right? And so I don't judge any, what, what I feel when I see a, like an old timer, long-term recovery guy who's struggling with the weight, I just want to hug him and whisper in his ear, you know? Yeah. I gotcha, let's go do this, you know? But the, those are the, that quiet desperation that you know, and here's the other move. I was thinking about it today. I don't have to do this move anymore. Right. <laughs> by, by the way, bro, I still do that. It's I catch myself doing it and I'm like, what am I even doing? I don't need to do this. Because you've been doing it for 40 plus years. So it's like, it's those kinds of things. And that's where the parallel of eating disorder and substance and alcohol use disorder for me and I don't know how you want to pivot, but I, 
bef much before those six warm Millers I drank in ninth grade with my face covered as, uh, as uh, Paul Stanley of Kiss. And I slammed those six warm Millers and it was Valhalla. Yeah. That night I got in a fist fight with Rich W who was the toughest kid at school. And I was making out with Mary W the, the prettiest cheerleader. That's what alcohol did for me. And it yeah. was like, oh, but before then, growing up in an Italian and Irish house of UAW workers and Teamsters, it was a volatile house and a box of Cap'n Crunch would take the edge off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's a what, box, that was my first love. For a sure. box of, uh, a bag of bugles would, a bot, you know, bags and boxes we always talk about that and then the i got it i got it in spades you know i was 268 pounds in that picture yeah. miserable lay miserable but hey chucking and jiving things are good i'm sober i'm doing the deal blah. and then i had a whole secret world my wife was a a a a, a, a baker like a in indianapolis when i was with the the team there and she was on the cover of indianapolis monthly i mean like world-class baker and she would have she had like this cream cheese frosting and she would mix um make carrot cookie cake sandwiches with it and put toasted pecans in it oh my god and coach i would freaking sneak and now i'm at the time sober like 20 plus years right I'd be sneaking at night and then she'd see me the next day or something. And I'd have she cream cheese frosting on and she'd say, do you know what happened to the cream cheese? I'm like, no, no idea. <laughs> yeah. Full on lie, full on all of that secret world of, of the food, which uh, brought me to my knees. And the yeah. only, the only way that it turned around for me and it's over seven years ago and that's been a, that was in 1992, so over 10 years when I first started to look at food, because it, I'm, I'm, if you look at the, the chart, it's a freaking yo-yo, you know, right. and uh, so that, that's the secretiveness, because it's not the, that's what I tell guys now, the, that secret world, that's what kills us. Yeah. Right? That, I never did drugs out in the open. I just wasn't, you know, I, yeah. there's, there'd be a guy I knew and, and we would do drugs together or a yeah. girl and we would do drugs together. And, and, but it, but it was, it was always secret. And most of my drug use, I was doing it, you know, in a bathroom stall or in my house uh, away from people. That is exactly how I ate. Also, mm. I would go out to dinner with people and order something that I would think I wouldn't get judged for ordering and have a plan. I would be making a plan on what fast food restaurants were open. And I, you know, if I go home this way, I'll hit a McDonald's, a 24 hour McDonald's. But if I go this way, it's a little longer, but there's a Wendy's and what do I feel like tonight? And, you know, if I feel really, uh, you know, uh, culinarily adventuresome, I'd hit the Astro burger on Melrose and Gower. That's open until 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is, this is what I was thinking about. Um, and it was that's all in secret. Tough way to live. And that's yeah. the whole world. And, and then being able, and then there's the, back to what you had said about how do we bring people in? It's me identifying with you and you identifying with me. And I, I feel like I'm not the only maggot on the planet that has thought felt or done the things that we've done just around food right this, this me digging out of uh how about this this move and i'm it brings me I, I don't talk about this stuff my food stuff but i am today and i thank you for that thank because you. it's killing guys killing but me digging like making a commitment you know what I'm throwing that vat of almond butter out and then me diving. Yeah. Garbage diving. Right. And eating out of the garbage. 
after making a commitment on my children, I'm going to stop this. Right. And then being powerless over that, back to your word, choice, over <laughs> that choice. Could not, that compulsion is so massive. It's me thinking that just because I'm the great Scott Gorman, I can stop the avalanche at the bottom of the hill. Yeah. Can't do it. Yeah. Can't do it. I need your help. Scott, there there are times I remember, you know, I think about this. Did I make an analytical choice every time I did drugs? And, and I just know I didn't because I'd have points where I'd get in my car and I'd be saying to myself, and I've done it both with drugs and food. I am not going to buy drugs. This is what I'm saying. I believe you. And then I'm, I, and then the blackout starts and then I'm the blackout ends and I'm in my car doing drugs or I'm in my car and I've just gone through the drive through and I've got a sack of Carl's Jr. food. Yeah. And I've had, I've, I've, I've kind of, snapped into the present holding you know reaching into a bag from the drive through going holy shit i've thrown it out the window and then i actually had to drive over it because i knew that if it was just sitting there on the ground i could still go and get it but if i drove over it that would be enough but it's but there's no choice there i'm not making analytical choices you know what i mean yeah. so the the ability to make choice to make choices is just different than it's certainly different than my ability to make choices today having some distance even yeah. though i still am having to create my life in the present every day it's still today it's tuesday and i'm just doing tuesday amen right Thank God for just having to deal with today. Cause if I start thinking about two weeks from now, it's like, what the fuck or what's the point? Yeah. Um, that's, but, that's, we were talking before you started recording about the, the trick with food and because, and I love this saying in the world of, of eating disorder recovery, we got to walk the tiger three times a day. Yeah. And I literally, ha I can, I'm a very visual person. <laughs> and, you know, me just having a leash on a freaking 450 pound white Siberian tiger, <laughs> right? And it, it's, a, here, be a good little kitty. Come on now. We're, yeah. It's amazing. It's, a, and it's a conscious, you know, I'll go into all that kind of stuff. I know, and, and there's another, I, you know, things are firing us so much, but there's men who play professional football suffering once they leave the game. Right. It's, it's, it's okay to be 370 and you're six, seven and you're playing left tackle and you're protecting uh, Matthew Stafford from getting his head decapitated. But then day one, after you leave the building and you're not working out and you're having to, that's where guys balloon to four bills and then sleep apnea, hypertension, heart disease, blah, 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 blah. You know it better than anybody. And yeah. so those are the things that there's a, a friend of mine named Nick Hardwick. Uh, I'm going to mention to you, uh, give you his intel, but he was the center for the San Diego Chargers for well over a decade and is now, you know. Wow doing the deal and helping guys right because that's you know it better than anybody peer to peer that's where the magic happens and that's another thing that i try and when new people are coming into recovery from whatever it is they're not alone we can giggle we can laugh we can joke about dumpster diving we can of which is the essence of where where the shame is yeah let's go we can go into that shame rabbit hole for another hour, right? And how I feel and the self-talk and all of that. But having peers walking together on this, home run. Yeah. Home run. So that's, I think this is an important thing to, to kind of get into also because um, I, 
put off recovery a number of times because I couldn't go to a meeting intoxicated. Mm. And and I felt that I needed to get sober first. Mm. And I felt that I, I had so much shame and I felt that I needed to show up having done the work already. Mm. And very similarly with food, um, I have been many times unwilling to discuss it until I've accomplished something Mm. until I've, until I've gotten, you know, I'm going to lose 20 pounds. Then I'll start to seek help. Does that make sense? Yes. How do we defeat that shame? Like, look, having done it, I know that's the last place I ever need to feel ashamed. You can't make me feel ashamed there. You know what I mean? Like I could try so hard to find the worst shit I've done. And the reaction from people is going to be like, yep, been there. Yeah. Or this, I did that. And then. Right. Then they freaking then they freaking one up you you know yeah. it's like oh my You're like, and you what? know the best you know the best screenwriters in los angeles you've been privy to them your whole life they cannot make up the shit no that we have done that is based on that's fact right. they can't make it up you wouldn't believe These it. great minds can't make it up and put yeah. it on paper right is that fair? It, it, no, I think it's a hundred percent fair. And that's why I, I don't understand it in myself because it happened to me over and over again. I finally show up and I'm like, fuck, why didn't I come here a month ago? Or why didn't I come here the last seven times I had the idea I need to go there or, or with a diet when my diet's failing And I'm like, well, now I can't talk to them because now I can't reach out for help because I'm failing. I have to be in that sense of shame is overwhelming to the point where I'm failing simply due to my perceptions of my own shame. Mm. So uh, how can we help that? How can I help that as a person in recovery? if I'm involved in a recovery meeting of any type and whatever that looks like for anybody, I have to make sure that I'm not putting out anything but openness and love because the only requirement for membership at many of these programs is a desire to stop whatever. That's all it, that's, you wanna get in the door? Have a desire to stop, you're in. (laughs) You are a full-fledged, you are a card carrying member because you just said so. Right. Period. And I think that gets lost in the translation because you want to have a perfect score before you go to the, you, you know, you want to have been able to, to bench 250 before you go to, to the to gym, Gold, Gold's gym. Yeah. Right? And say, and then you can only do 45 on the bar and you're just like, just the shame spiral. Right. And, and the reality is, dude, you just did seven reps on an Olympic bar and you've never lifted weights before. You know, that's right. me. It's insane. Right. Yeah. So again, the, the hamster wheel, my own hamster wheel is not based in reality. A lot of the, a lot of the time. So. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a funny thing that we do. Um, the other thing I've been thinking a lot about is, and it's something um, that I dealt with n- n- numerous times, and then I've seen people dealing with it. And, you know, I don't do this podcast as a prescriptive thing. I'm not trying to say everybody should be sober, everybody yeah. should lose weight. This is not, this is not my, I don't think that, I don't believe that, but I do think that I've found a lot of benefit in having somebody else to talk to that has some idea of what I've gone through. Mm. And, and so the times where I've gone like, no, no, I can do this in a vacuum by myself. I can fight through it. I don't need to talk to anybody. I don't need to have somebody to be accountable to. I don't need that. I've had 
trouble and failures. And so what, what, what would your words be on that? To walk through the uncomfortable of picking that thing up that you, you've heard that term before. Yeah. The, the 600 pound deadlift to pick <laughs> that up. up the phone. Yeah. Right. And literally emitting air out of my body with words attached boom that's the it dissipates if it's a compulsion if it's a thought if it's an idea if it's a desire if i say e um i was thinking about uh going to in and out today and uh, you know it's sort of on my my food program it's sort of and <laughs> And I'm just really like I'm driving there right now. And then you would lovingly say to me, well, let's let's talk that all the way through. Right. Let's 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 see what that really looks like. And then what does the order look like? And then you break it down to me. And then what is the feeling when the consumption is happening? What does that feel like? And then the magic. What does it feel like? when you're driving home right. and you get home and you're looking in the mirror, what's that feel like? Right. Yeah. And so, and that all happens like that in a, in a few second conversation. And that's what I just urge people, you know, that that's the one thing, uh, well, those abstinence based 12 step programs don't work. True uh, for many people, but on the flip, it does work for a lot of folks. Yeah. And, and it's not a one size fits all. It's a, it's in my opinion, these days is take the best, leave the rest, see what you can do. If, if moderation management, if any of those harm reduction, if any of that stuff helps keep you vertical, I'm in. Me too. And then if in fact that doesn't work after your beta test, then there's other options. And for me, the abstinence part of things, Ethan, um, I just don't have a governor on my engine. I've right. accepted that about me. I taught my, uh, my wife and I taught my daughter and son rudimentary sign language when they were, you know, young, just oh, nice. to try and communicate. Yeah. And my daughter, <laughs> this is the one she learned the fastest. More. <laughs> I want more. Yeah. And that's, I have a disease of mas, you know? Yeah. Of freaking, the thinking of, it just reminded me of Paquito, Paquito Mas. Mas. In, that's what I thought too. You say mas, that's all that says to me. Oh, God, yes. I would take Paquito deep on yeah. uh, freaking cold water and Ventura. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I, I, I think back to uh, instances in my life and and i know you don't like bottom and and i can't even i can't even really point to like a moment that was yeah. my bottom i remember very clearly the 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 day that i wanted to lose weight and i've never turned back from that day yeah i don't remember with drugs it's 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 uh you know because i was doing drugs so it's all about you know, it's a little yeah. bit hazy those yeah. those times <laughs> yeah. a little yeah. bit hazy but i i do remember um a very dear friend of mine uh harold harold pruitt who od'd in a bathroom as we were buying drugs and i gave him cpr and i remember sitting in the bathroom and and he lived at that point um mm -hmm. uh I remember sitting with him thinking like, what the fuck are we doing? And then we kept doing drugs and he died. No. And, and then we kept doing, and then I kept doing drugs. And so there's a lot of, there's a lot of the universe sending flares, sending messages, sending signals like, you're, this this path is fraught with danger and i just know my ability to ignore those signals is 
unparalleled. Nothing would get in my way. And I, I thank God or whatever yeah. that I've been able to get my claws into life a little bit more. And the, food is the same thing. You know, I had sleep apnea, hypertension, high cholesterol, liver failure, and not quite liver failure, but it was yeah. like on my blood work, I was right there. At the, Fatty the, liver or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really bad. Um, congestive heart failure. And these things were not enough in those moments to get me to change. It took something else, but I did have finally the thing that was it for me. And I've been able to make that change. And there really is like, to your point, like, yeah, if you can, if you can do, you know, if you can get your health, cause we're talking about health and stuff. If you can get your health into order and eat, you know, animal style, double doubles at in and out, that's great. I can't do that. Yeah. You know, the um, acceptance of that fact. Right. That's, that's the process to get to that place where I'm waving waving the surrender which is not part of my dna by the way yeah if i surrender to you ethan i will die right that's the that's the default and then you guys say surrender to win or vulnerability wins and i'm like no vulnerability gets you killed (laughs) and but that's it's totally opposite and uh accepting the fact that for whatever reason in the universes, whatever that power is, whatever connects me, if we're spiritual beings having a human experience, whatever that is. And that's another whole side note of that kills a lot of folks, I think, uh, verbiage. Yeah. Just verbiage around whatever entity is, is connecting all of this stuff. If in fact, there is even something, who knows? Right. It's a whole nother topic, but and, 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 and for me, it's completely unnecessary because Scott, yes. you and me is yeah. a power higher than just me on my own. You and I beat me. And that's All the day. way I think about it. And if I got a teammate, we're going to yeah. do better than me by myself. As corny as this is, I can't, we can. So it's all those little freaking sayings. What are they based on? Either based on fundamental truths of 3000 years. Yeah. You know, it's like that's what's that's what's going on today. Uh, when when we think about walking the tiger because it it, it has you know I don't want to say it's easy because I don't think abstinence is easy. It's certainly not easy for somebody who's in it, right? right. I do believe it has for me my experience has been that it has gotten easier. Yes. Still not, still wouldn't really call it easy. My life is very different. Um, and if you had asked me when I was 21 years old, what I wanted, to, how I wanted to be experiencing my life, I couldn't even imagine what my life is now and how no. much, how much more I like it um, than what I would have said at 21, right? It's just vastly different. Um but in the way that my life is organized now, abs- there's lots of room for abstinence. There's no way to achieve abstinence with food. You, you said it, you got to walk the tiger three times yeah. a day. It's a very, very, you know, I, I think sometimes I think of it in terms of danger and I do actually think it's mm-hmm. dangerous. Um, and uh, it can be dangerous. And, and if we aren't, you know, taking a real honest look at our behaviors and our actions and our, and things that will sidetrack us, we're gonna, we're gonna have setbacks. Um, What, what is your, how do you walk the tiger? What do you do? How do you safeguard that tiger? Do you have a muzzle on him? It's no, he's wide open. It's a, uh, he's got a leash. 
Yeah. And I'm walking him. But I also have, as I'm walking him, right. I have somebody on the other line. I share, I write, I write down what I eat. Yeah. I share it. I, there's an accountability and a connectivity. Two things, two concepts that are massive part of recovery. And you know that. And it's, it's think about it this way. In every gym on the planet, I got a workout buddy. Right. Because I said, E, I'm going to be at, uh, uh, what was that one? At, uh, what was that gym at Laurel and Sunset? Crunch. crunch. I'm going to meet you yeah. at Crunch at 5.30 a.m., Ethan. Yeah. And at 5.20, I'm still in the rack. And I'm thinking, you know, I've been working hard. And I can just, I'll, I'll tell you that, you know what, I'm, I'm a little nauseous, right. you know. And, and I'll lie to him. And you're sitting there and you're jacked and you're ready and you're, you're waiting because that day we're working on personal bests. And I'm laying in the rack. And it's that same thing, that workout buddy gets my ass out of the bed, into the car, into the parking structure, up the elevator, into the gym. Yeah. And it's the same thing with my food. And that's on a daily basis. It's a, it's a, just a Tuesday thing, yeah. you know, and today I had an amazing breakfast that filled me up. And that's the whole thing as you experience. And I've seen you on the old IG about um, opening the mind around tastes and food and preparation and all that because I didn't want what's the essence of fast food now I want it now right and then now to be able to prepare food and take the time and not have to shove it into my body those yeah. are all those kinds of things that you guys have taught me my fellows in recovery doing the deal on the daily that's where my power comes from yeah. And, and being able to stack days on that. Cause I love how I feel. I can feel my body. I can feel vibrations in my body. And there was, I was so desensitized, insulated from, from feelings. Yeah. And, you know, being a dad and being a husband, feelings are flying on the daily. <laughs> oh man. And, and so we're choosing not to do this to stuff them down or to put a rig in our arm or to slam a, a 1.75 handle all day long. We're, we're choosing to walk through those feelings. And you help me with that because you get on the blower and say, you know what? I, uh, I was kind of a toolbox to my wife or, you know, and I, I have people that I talk to about that. Yeah. And so I, 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 you know, I feel again, I don't think there is a one size fits all and I don't think everybody has to do the same thing I do. Um, and, and I think it's less so with drugs and alcohol that I see this, but there is a whole industry um, built up about, I guess the reduction in work for this is what i think of the diet industry that it's really like a bunch of get rich quick schemes or mm. like how can you how can you get all the benefits and do as little work as possible um and mm. it's selling this idea that there is like one tweak that your behaviors go out the window you know what i mean like mm. however you've been living your life that will no longer happen if you just you know just don't eat seed oils or, you know, whatever it is, there's lots of them. Um, how do those make you feel when, when like you're having success and it's work, it's, it's actual work, you know, writing down, look, I write down what I eat too. And I can't tell you that that's super easy. It's no. not, you know what I mean? Like it takes time to do that. And, and, and also then, it makes me have to go like, fuck, I had, I had more mayonnaise, more light mayonnaise 
I don't want to write that down. I don't want to include that. You know what I mean? I don't want to cop to that. Exactly. But I got to. Hmm. Um, Because what? Because my life's on the line. Right. Our lives are on the line with substances, with alcohol, and with food. And I don't want to be part of, I want to be vertical. I want to see what my children do the rest of their lives. I want to be vertical. I have obesity in my family, tears my heart apart. And why do I put up with catching shit from, why are you eating salad? Why are you eating a salad that, BA, I call it a BAS on Big holiday. Ass salad. Big ass salad, which yeah. I love and I know you love. And it's just it's filling and it's got protein and it's got, why do you got to do, you're so strict. Because my life's on the line. Right. And I, it came to that. And that's where that finally being beaten into that place where you know what i don't want to do this anymore and um and that's the part around substances and alcohol it it's a faster uh, demise right. and you and i have known some of the most talented people on the planet that are dead you know and um i don't know i get i get fired up and emotional and it's uh i don't like doing eulogies and i know you don't either because what I, I get scared of my, there's the buzzard and the second period of play. The, I get scared of losing my friends. Yeah. And if you stay in apps, if you stay in recovery long enough, that's part of the deal. It's just uh, one of my uh, meetings I go to lost another young kid, you know, and uh, I don't know. I fucking appreciate you so much, Scott. Yeah, I love you, bud. It's just like, that's the part of this too. We can cut 22 years and be in the same play. And that's where you want, think about this. You want to be, you know, the Grand Havana Room or any of the Buffalo Club. Remember back in the day, all the exclusive, you want to be an an exclusive club, the most exclusive club. Come into the club of recovery because think about the cost to get in. Yeah. It costs you your word. It costs you your dignity. It costs you a bunch of jack. Think about the jack. It's a lot, the, 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 the expenses to get in. The entry fee is massive. Massive. And then to get in though, though now, it's the greatest one on the planet in my humble opinion. You want to, I always use this with NFL players. You want a competitive advantage? They're always looking for a competitive advantage. Right. Because as you know, in it's it's nanoseconds, it's it's immeasurable. Competitive advantage, not come to out of a blackout and then go have to play the Rams. Right. Right? Just the let's talk about the physical parts of how ethyl alcohol demolishes your body from inside out yeah so i'm able to incorporate that doing bong rips all day and damaging your freaking engine the very thing to be able to process oxygen and carbon dioxide you're on like and i know it's not a problem because you told me it's not a problem right it's not no it's i can stop anytime okay let's do a beta test Right. For 17 weeks of this season. And we're just going to shut it down and see how how well you perform. Yeah. A kid has done that for two years now and just signed a hundred million dollar deal. Right. I bet it's staggering the amount that he sees as a difference. Yes. And the advantage. He's like, man, I wish I would have done this earlier. It looks that that kind of stuff. But he didn't get to that place. A lot of guys can't get to that place of being beaten until it's too late because in the NFL, average career is 3.2 you know 3.2 years yeah it's a it's nfl stands for not for long right so it's 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 kind of anyway that's a whole nother topic but scott 
Thank you so much. This has been a wonderful conversation. I really, really appreciate you. Likewise, and- I can't wait to see you when I'm in Los Angeles. We're, you're still in the Southern Cal area. Hold on. We're going to end this. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.